Hello friends, I am Ardhan Dudey and you are watching Edis English Literature. In this video lecture, I am critically analyzing Romanticism. We are going to discuss the various characteristics of Romantic poetry and uh, the understanding of the Romantic poetry is a must for literary students. But first, what is Romanticism? The Romantic movement in the literature of virtually every country of Europe, the United States and Latin America lasted from about uh, 1750 to about 1870 and is often defined as the second renaissance. Romanticism cannot be identified with a single style, technique or attitude, but romantic writing is generally characterized by highly imaginative and subjective approach and here is emotional intensity freedom of thought expression and idealization of nature mother and a dreamlike or visionary quality is also there the term romantic first appeared in 18th century english and uh, originally it meant romance like uh, that is uh, resembling the fanciful character of medieval novella or medieval romances. The term romanticism that we find popular critical book has been variously defined by various critics. Walter Petter calls it the addition of strangeness to beauty. Waltz Danto defines it as the renaissance of wonder. Evercombe on the other hand traces the subjective uh, approach or subjective element of Romanticism and he writes Romanticism is a withdrawal from outer experience to concentrate upon inner experience. Logias and Kajamion in, uh, in, in, in their famous book History of English Literature emphasizes uh, the emphasize both the emotional and imaginative aspects of romanticism and points out the accented predominance of emotional life provoked and directed by the excessive of the imaginative vision. The romantic movement says popular historical and writer W.J. Long was marked and is always marked by a strong reaction and protest against the bondage of rule and custom which is which in science and technology as well as in literature generally tend to fetter the free human spirit. So in Victor Hugo rightly he describes and defines romanticism as liberalism in literature. So various critics in their various interpretations like to see the romanticism in their own way. The romantic movement made a reaction against the 18th century tradition of Pope, Dryden, Johnson, both in matter and manner. It made a revolt against the so-called classical poetry which delighted in order decorum and decency with grace, clarity, precision and forgot one thing there that uh, alone these are not making to poetry that is inspiration and imagination that's the key point that they missed according to these new romantics. By the late 18th century in France and Germany literary taste began to turn from classical and neoclassical conventions. Inspiration from the romantic approach initially came from the two great shepherds of the Europe and these are the French philosopher Rousseau and German writer Johann Wolfgang von Goethe. Rousseau established the cult of the individual and championed the freedom of human spirit. His famous announcement was I failed before I thought. Goethe and his compatriots had 
and Moza provided more formal precepts and collaborated on a group of essays entitled on German style and art which was published in 1773. In this work the authors extol the romantic spirit as manifested in German folk songs, Gothic architecture and the plays of English playwright William Shakespeare. So new visionary judgment on those thoughts has begun. So inspired by all this, Wordsworth, Coldridge, Shelley, Keats, Byron in England broke away from the artificial tradition of certain conventions and stereotype expressions and they capitalized personifications and uh, there are some imageries, rhetorical arguments and reshaped the very English poetry with the fire of inspiration and essence of emotions and love to nature and obviously there is sentiments. The preface to the second edition of Lyrical Ballads which was published in 1800 by English poet William Wordsworth and Samuel Taylor Coleridge was of prime importance as a manifesto of literary romanticism. Here the two great poets confirmed and affirmed the importance of feeling and imagination to the poetic creation and disclaimed conventional literary forms and subjects. So, uh, as romantic literature everywhere developed or going up, you must say uh, that there has been some pre-knowledge of the romanticism that precursor of the uh, poetry has begun. Now, this, um, this, this imagination over the reason and emotions over the logic and intuition over the science making way for a first body of literature of the great sensibility and passion. In fact, this literature emphasized a new flexibility of form to varying content, encouraged to the development of complex and fast moving plots and allowed mixed genres and free style, revolt against rules, imaginative reactions of nature and human beings, love of nature and reinterpretation of it as an important part of this kind of expressions. Increased interest in elemental feelings of common human being, subjective emotion, subtle elasticity in style are the predominant features of romantic poetry. Now if we classify the romantic poetry we can say that that in their choices of heroes the romantic writers replace the static universal types of classical 18th century literature with more complex idiosyncratic characters and a great deal of drama, fiction and poetry was developed on these ideologies. And uh, this might be said that uh, these are the uh, these are the idealization or the celebration of Rousseau's common man. From a sociological and political perspective, it is not unfair to say that Romanticism and the French Revolution are synonymous. In fact, Rousseau's social theory roughly embodies the familiar phase of the return of nature. While the battle cry of the French Revolution had the three mantras, liberty, equality and fraternity. These are the three principles that are influential on the youthful imagination of romantic poets. Rousseau establishes the cult of individual and championed the freedom of human ideologies, human spirits. So Rousseau's sentimental influence touches Blake, Wordsworth, Coldidge and many romantic poets and his intellectual influence had uh, imbibed Godwin and through Godwin Shelley, Byron. So later, Byron and Shelley also shared the champion of liberty and revolutionary idealism in many of their poems. A wonderful humanitarian enthusiasm and a gorgeous dream of progress and perfection are kindled in ardent young souls. And these are the romantic souls. This is the central creed of romantic poetry. There is the prophecy of a new day, forwarding immediately into an era 
of realized democratic ideals. I can I can quote a few lines from Urdu West Wind. The trumpet of a prophecy, oh wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? So these lines from Urdu West Wind tells many a things of revolution. One of the distinguishing characteristics of the Romantic movement is the increased attention paid to nature. I mean nature and natural surroundings. Previous poets either entirely ignored nature or introduced it occasionally as a background to man. But that background has become itself a character in Romantic poetry. So basic to such sentiment was an interest central to the Romantic movement. The, uh, the delight in unspoiled scenery of nature and the natural surroundings and innocent, and innocent life of rural dwellers as a literary theme is seen in the seasons by James Thompson, the precursor of romantic poetry. The work is commonly cited as a favorite influence on later English romantic poets and in Odo Evening which was published in 1747 by William Collins and elegy written in a country churchyard in 1751 by Thomas Gray. And all these poems we can we can say that there is nature and there is common man. And these are the beginning. Later Wordsworth and Shelley saw in nature something more than the mere objective phenomena. They saw an inner spirit. They uh, they felt a kind of they fi they felt a vital personality. They realized a super sensual sense in nature, or along with the subtle perception of natural beauty, they grew up a desire to seek the remote and Christian, which is so with the hedge of a strangely mysterious atmosphere. It is this which led Coleridge to lose himself in the supernatural atmosphere of the ancient Medina or the hunting mystery of Kubla Khan and which made kids construct with intense imagination power and imaginative force the medieval magic world of the lovely dance and smart scene. To a romantic poet, every single fact is yeah, veritably unique while he is contemplating it, there is nothing like it. To Wordsworth, there is no bridge like the Westminster Bridge. To kids, there is no so like that of the night angle. A romantic poet colors the world with his own glorious fancy, then contemplates it with a childlike wonder at the freshness and beauty. In their choice of subject matter, the romantic showed an affinity for nature especially its wild and mysterious aspects and for exotic, melancholic and melodramatic subjects likely to evoke awe oh, or passion. Nature comes to the new light in romantic poetry. It takes the widest possible connotation. Nature for the romantic poets includes landscape, trees, plants, hills, rivers, mountains as well as rural fox together. With their cottages, sheep, goats, and rural festivals. Kids visualizes its nature. Sally intellectualizes. Wordsworth mystifies. And Byron revolutionizes it. Wordsworth, the worshiper and high priest of nature, he says that I, so long a worshiper of nature, hither come and wed in that service. Let us say, with warm love, oh, with far deeper jail of holy love. It also represents return to nature. He loves nature for the sensuous pleasures it gives and not for the spiritual significance or intellectual message. Where words were spiritualized, silly intellectualized, kids in his content is here finding a kind of expression through nature of sensualism. The color, the scent, the touch, the music, these are the things that steer him 
to his depths. There is not a mood of art that he does not love, not a season that will not cheer up and inspire him. To him, as to the ancient Greeks, holy are the haunted boughs, holy are the water, air and fire. This nature appreciation is best recorded in his Udwata. The Romantic movement is both a revolt and revival. This movement in literature and the revolutionary idealism in European politics are both generated by the same human craving for freedom from traditions tyrant. Political and social causes become dominant themes in Romantic poetry and pose throughout the Western world, producing many vital human documents that are still pertinent. Lord Byron and Parsimisi Selim, who for some most typify the Romantic poet in their personal lives as well as in their works. They wrote a kind of a protest against social and political injustices, wrongs, and in defense of struggles for liberty. In Italy and in Greece, again, the Romantic movement revives. The Romantic movement revives the poetic ideals of love, beauty, emotion, imagination, romance, and beauty of nature. Kids celebrates beauty, Sally adores love, Wordsworth glorifies nature, Byron idealizes humanism, Scott revives medieval lore, and Coleridge amalgamates the supernatural in his poetry. As a result, the Romantic movement revolted against the ideals, the principles, the intellectualism, the, art, the aristocracy, and technicality of the Augustan period, and smoothed the very run of broad emotional gallery of substance and uh, this all romantic poetry in a word relinquished the rigidity of form that was so much uh, hammering the very flow of natural poetry. The other most important feature of romantic poetry is emotionalism. Here is an effusion of feelings, emotions and heartfelt appreciation of beauty in all forms, human or natural. It springs from the heart and makes an appeal to the another heart. It is spontaneous and natural and no levered exercise. The preface to the second edition of lyrical ballads that I have already told, in which Wordsworth and Samuel Coleridge has given the prime importance in uh, and, 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 and that is the prime importance on humanism and uh, on, on the natural flow. That's the, and, and there they have traced the importance of feelings and imaginations to poetic creation and disclaim conventional literary forms and subjects. So imagination, emotions, intuitions roll over to the literary output of uh, sensibility and passion. Kids add to the basic quality of romance, sensuousness, a yearning for beauty in all. It's, uh, it's, it concentrates on shapes, forms, a sense of regret, frustration, more finally felt because uh, these poems are rooted in his personal experiences. He suggests a contrast between the real world of suffering and the imaginative ideal world of dreams and desires. His romanticism lies in suggesting the thrill of beauty through sensuous pictures and expressions. His Lamia, the eve of Saint Agnes, Ode to a Night Angle, Ode on a Grecian Arm, and Ode to Atom. So his romantic aspiration, his sensuous appreciations of beauty and the pictures, the pictorial quality of his poetic art. Criticism, rather than intellectual or satirical, is the basic preoccupation of romantic poetry. There is the full expression of one's own personal feelings and sentiments towards an object. As such, there is an abundance of lyrics, songs, sonnets, odes, egotistical poems in romantic poetry. 
Umar Swad Kholi, Sally Kids, Byron are all famous lyric poets. All these uh, lyrics favor subjectivity, emotionalism, impulse, and the play of imagination. Such intensity of feelings can be read in Sally's to a scholar. I must quote a few lines. We look before and after and pine for what is not. Our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught. Our sweetest songs are those that tales of saddest thoughts. The medieval age, the magic of distance, spirit of adventure, night, errand, duels, battles, tournaments, voyages over uncharted seas. All these are in romantic poetry. These are in fact a storehouse of fascination for romantic poets. Coldage creates make-believe world. And on, uh, on some of the poetry, we can have a doctrine of willing suspension of disbelief. Kids explores Hellenism as if a Greek born in England. This lure of exotic is everywhere in their text. Apart from this, the pictorial quality, the subtle harmony of French, extensive use of poetic imagery and simplicity of diction are the other characteristics of romantic poetry. The very setting of Zamado in Asia, evoked by Coleridge in his unfinished lyric Kumle Khan, Thomas Parsi's relics of ancient English poetry exerted a significant influence on form and content of later romantic poetry. The nostalgia for the Gothic past mingled with the tendency to the to the uh, very melancholic and 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 produced a fondness for ruins, graveyards and to the supernatural world as their themes. Kate's most classical poem, Ode on a Grecian Arn, combines the elements of romance and Hellenism in a fine manner. And everywhere his worship of beauty adds a peculiar element of attraction. Again, uh, we can find out in his Ode to Night Angle. There is romance and nature. Like Scott, Kate's was fascinated by the a spectacular aspects of the Middle Age. Their poems, their pageantry, magic, enchantment, adventure, love, severely. Among his poems that are giving a, a vivid reaction of the uh, medieval life in the Eve of St. Agnes uh, and, 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 uh, and Damson's Mercy. Uh, so, besides medievalism, the Greek mythology is exerted a rare fascination over him and uh, inspired him to the best works Endymion, Lamia, Hyperion and to the plentiful allusions to classical themes. The, the influence of Greek sculpture is evident in the sonnet on the Elgin marbles and there was more than one channel through which uh, Hellenism style uh, into kids works literature, sculpture, and instinct. And these are all combined in its expression. Thus, both in manner and matter, romantic poetry are far different from Augustine age. Though the romantic age and literature somehow slowed down with the Victorian era, its spirit is still relevant in present-day literary productions. Now, one can say that is the Romanticism born from directly from the French? I can say that Romanticism in its truest definition might have came from there, but the spirit of Renaissance that was born in the 14th, 15th and 16th century Europe has been the very base of this Romanticism. Now, with the spirit that you have learned many things from romantic poetry and most probably there are many things that I have missed in my lecture. So you can have that comments or mentioning that points in my comment section. Like, share, comment and obviously subscribe to my channel so that I can get uh, more views from you as well as 
I can have the access that what kind of lectures do you like or prefer yourself. Bye-bye. Thank you.